Welcome to part 13 of Super Mario RPG, and in this episode, we are going to deal with Mary Moore. The other reason why this is probably the longest star in the game. One of them, anyway. Mary Moore, in and of itself, is pretty long, so it's not that big of a surprise. Anyway. I, what I'm doing is basically switching over Mario's uh, weapon room with a happy shirt and switching over Gino and Mallow's weapons because if you try to buy the super hammer from Mario and the chop shell for Bowser, it's going to be weaker than what they already have. So yes, you might want to hold on to those weapons until we get to Nimbus Land because you get better weapons by then. Anyway, the whole point is... Booster just kicked everyone out, and Raz and Rainy is tapping into their inner Igus from Persona 3, and is screaming for help. Why? Because the snippets just, and Booster actually, took over the entirety of the church so they can try to marry Princess Peach, even though Booster doesn't even know the first thing about marriage. In case anybody's wondering, Karma is a bitch, just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, instead of talking to those guys who's been wandering out there like imbeciles, because they've all scalped by people, go figure, we'll try to go around the back door, which is right over there. I was just checking if there was a hidden chest somewhere, and sadly there isn't. However, if you jump on the cake, you will anger Chef Torte and Assistant. Or Apprentice. But I'd keep my eye- But if you stay there for a little while, you'll actually see the cake starting to jiggle a little bit. Which is rather scary and rather ironic, to say the least, if these guys actually need something like that. Anyway. This guy's telling you to make like Mario and jump and get lost. Unfortunately, Mario's standing right in front of him. And now it makes Booster's goons even more stupid. Sniffit 1 wants you to break down the door. It's gonna take time, which is another reason why this is gonna drag on. Because sometimes the timing is very, you know, difficult for me. I mean, people could get him on the first try, but it may take a little while. Alright, what I need to do is get this both of us to be even, so we can both ram the door at the same time. Damn it. Come on. He must have brain damage from running into that door all the time. There we go. Well, it's the first accident that's going to happen. Now, the second accident, however, yeah, it's about to happen right about now. Seeing as how, uh, Booster doesn't want Mario in the actual wedding hall to interrupt his wedding, we're just gonna have to have Bowser to help us out here. After all, Bowser is good at breaking things down. Believe me, there are several on several games that actually says otherwise. Ah, first try! That never happened to me before. Oh! That sucks. And because of this, Peach has dropped her shoes, her ring, her brooch, and her crown. Why are they tossing her like that? Don't bother me now. Okay, everyone. The bride is growing impatient. Let the wedding begin. What's this? Water coming from your eyes? Are you leaking, my dear? Dude, he was crying earlier in his tower. He doesn't even know what tears are. Tastes salty. Oh my god, he actually licked our tears. Oh my god, this guy's an idiot. Booster, sir, I believe the bride may be crying. Crying? 
but that's what people do when they're sad. How disgusting. That stuff must be corrosive. Oh, it tastes like the sea. What could be making her cry anyway? I believe she's crying because she dropped some of her wedding gear. Aha, of course. She has dropped her gear. But those tears will ruin the cake. Make her stop before Mario breaks in. But Mario's already in! Booster, sir, we have to hurry and find her things. We have to get the wedding going. I mean, get on with the wedding. In the meantime, perhaps you can enjoy some cake? 10 4, good buddy. Find her stuff. I'll move the ceremony forward. Hurry! Sir, you're supposed to be on the right. The bride is supposed to be on your left. Just ask it like this, right? And now for a mini game that will warrant you either a flower tab or a very awkward scene. One of the two. Well, actually, it's a flower jar if you actually get it fast enough. Anyway. Here's the thing. You gotta catch these sniffets, all three of them, and get the crown off of, uh, Booster's head before this, uh, group of lanterns, not lanterns, group of candles, light all four, uh, aisles. Yeah, all four candles on the aisle light, that's what I'm trying to say. Jump on his head, you idiot! There we go, now talk to Booster. Oh, here it is! Hey, you're Mario! You can get to see... Here's the thing. If you happen to get all three... No, all four, sorry. Yeah, all four items before the torches completely light up, um, you'll get a special cutscene. If you actually find all four the items before the torches light up, not only will you get a kiss from the princess, but you'll also get a flower jar for your troubles. This is one of those one-time-only deal things. But... The only thing you will... I will get since I let two of the candles light... Is... A... Unexpected smooch from someone else. Oh, jeez. It was always that last freaking sniff it. And, yep, you got yourself an awkward kiss. And, of course, if Toadstool had a camera phone, she would probably blackmail Bowser with this. This is probably why he's never invited in the parties. And now for the reason why things are going to be dragging a little bit slower than what they should. Chef Torte and his apprentice have just finished making the cake. Looks yummy, right? Right? Well, they're kind of angry that nobody's going to be there to eat the cake. In fact, they're so fuming that Mario's trying to take the bride and leave. They're going to fight Mario and company for the princess. Because they want somebody to eat the cake. And of course they're bitter. Now, Chef Torte, Apprentice, and Boot and Strawberry. That's a mouthful, but that is who we're fighting right now. Don't even worry about Chef Torte and the Apprentice. They will be leaving pretty soon. They will... I mean, the Apprentice actually hurts more than Chef Torte. But... If you try to damage Chef Torte and the Apprentice, it's only going to do a minuscule damage. However, if you keep damaging the cake, 
it's going to start moving. Now the cake isn't going to be a real threat until these two dunderheads leave. And once they do, oh crap. This cake. Never in my life have I gotten my ass kicked so badly by a wedding cake. But not this time around, because I'm well prepared. It's best you come in at level 10, or at least level 11, in order for you to survive this. Well, at least level 10, that's what I meant to say. Oh wait, that's the apprentice! Torte's on the right, never mind. Well, they both look alike, I mean... What can you say? But anyway... Or am I mispronouncing Torte's Torte's name wrong? No, no, uh, no, it's right. It's Torte. Well, Torte still not believing that boot cake has a mind of its own. Now it does. Oh crap! Boot cake. This thing here. Magic will be its main key, and I'm gonna tell you now, don't use magic to blow out the candles. Physicals will only blow out the candles. Because if you use magic, the candles will actually relight themselves. If he uses magic on you, the candles will relight itself. I mean, if the candles are not blown out, he will do some really seriously nasty magics to you. And that's just boot. God forbid you're still raspberry that you need to deal with. Oh, speaking of nasty magics, here's Sandstorm. And Lullaby, oh god. No! No! Oh, sweet Jesus. Thank goodness nobody got turned or put to sleep. Yes, Handgun is going to be my friend here. As is just plain old aggro. But at least we got the worst of it out of the way now. Let's try to heal people, because Strawberry's no slouch either. Seriously, I can't believe I'm fighting a cake. A cake that also knows Sandstorm. No, it's screw you. But Raspberry has less HP than what Boot does. But what makes this even more hilarious is the fact that your horrible troubles come from Boot. So long as Boot had those candles, he could pull off terrible magics like Diamond Song and Blizzard and things of that nature. And it's just gross how he could do that. Whereas once you get to Boot, all you have to do is just damage this thing. I don't even think Boot's weak to fire. But just the fact if you damaging that- Oh, he's resistant to it. Well, so much for its debut. And... Boot Cake only has 231 damage. Oh, shit, I forgot he had that. Wow, that was brutal. Especially when Mario and Mallow are fear. Is afraid, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, Boon Cake is officially dead. Well, I guess my advice to you is using physicals. And just use healing items when you can to survive. That's basically all you have to do. And try to deal with Boon Cake first. And don't waste your time with Torte and the Prince. That's all I can tell you about this boss. Otherwise, this boss is not really that bull. This boss isn't that bad once you get rid of Boot. But while Boot's there, uh, he can waste you quickly. 
Oh, and the only other thing you probably have to watch out for is Sandstorm. Kinda makes me wish I could have switched over the Fearless and Bowser. But nonetheless, Booster is about to do something rather odd. Instead of us getting coins for beating Boom Cake and Raspberry, well, Booster is going to eat Raspberry. And that's a very awkward way to kill a boss. Unless that person's Molina. But still, it's an awkward way. Wow. He's trying to eat this cake with one gulp. He seriously doesn't know how weddings work. However, I cannot blame him because weddings sometimes have the best food. Depending on how much the person spent on it. And now, one boss completely eliminated. Wow. That's like a fate worse than death. Getting eaten by a madman. With that said, Booster literally wrapped up the wedding. Little does that idiot know that he inadvertently married Peach. No, wait, it wasn't really a wedding to begin with. Now that I think about it, they didn't have a preacher because he kicked him out. Well, that was kind of an awkward end to such a very high-powered battle. Still, at least we've got the princess back. And at least we don't have to worry about her being kidnapped anymore in this game. And there's a reason for that. Because Princess Toadstool is our final party member. And now that we have her in our possession, we're going to be going straight to the Mushroom Kingdom to return her back to where she belongs. Now everybody is going to celebrate by Ravis and Randy having a wedding and proceeding with the actual ceremony as opposed to sitting outside and waiting for Booster and his minions to finish up their catastrophe of a ceremony, to say the least. I would go in to see the ceremony, but I've got other things to do. <coughs> like, for instance, group picture! Let's talk to this guy first, then join in on the group picture. Why the long face? This isn't a funeral, you know. Alright, on the count of three, say ah! And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've gotten ourselves out of Merrymore, and now we're gonna have to go all the way back to Mushroom Kingdom by way of exposition. I wish we could do that all the time. <coughs> but I'm gonna find me an inn, and I am going to save, and in the next episode, we are definitely going to go after the third, I mean the fourth star. Yes, the fourth star. This is RVMan985. See you guys next time. Damn, I hate this star.